host, Rebecca Turner. Don't forget you can listen to Good Things. We are streaming live over at supertalk.fm. We're also streaming from that Supertalk Mississippi app. And, of course, you can always find us, too, on your local Supertalk Mississippi radio station. And don't forget to watch us. We are on Supertalk TV. You can find us on your computer or your mobile device. But today you'll find us coming to you live from the historic stages at the Temple Theater for the 71st Annual Jimmy Rogers Festival, thanks to First Mississippi Federal Credit Union. If you want more information, go on to Jimmy Rogers. Robert, Jim, JimmyRogers.com for more information. We're starting out today with Leslie Lee. She's the executive director of the Jimmy Rogers Festival. This is her third year, and I shouldn't be mumbling. I'm not nearly as tired as you are, Leslie. So you, you, um, you've been going for, you and your staff have been going for six full days now because the festival actually kicked off when? That's right, Rebecca. Um, we started on Sunday of this week, and we've been going every day at full speed. <laughs> so. so it's been a crazy week for you guys. It really has, but it's been a great week. You know, all of our volunteers, our board of directors, we work all year for this. Um, and it's not just for Meridian, it's for the entire state. And we have people from all over that come to this. Um, they plan their vacation around it. Some people get here and stay the entire week. So. It's a great thing. When you think about a festival lasting for seven decades, you know that it has to be something that the community as well as others enjoy for it to keep on keeping on mm -hmm. and to celebrate the life of Jimmy Rogers, which my daughter and I got to tour a little of the Max prior to coming here for good things. And we both were shocked to know that he passed away at 35. That's Many right. may know that, but I think I, I just never really connected those dots. And once you reach over that age, right, Leslie, you're like, <laughs> right. wow, for someone to leave that kind of impact and les legacy mm -hmm. in such a short period of time he did and you know when he was making music he really only had a little over four years that all of that music 111 songs that has left such a lasting impression on music um, in just four years I mean it's it's amazing to think of that so we love what we do and the whole reason for this is to preserve the legacy and to keep it going and to keep it going my daughter asked too, Neely she said she's 11 she said mommy why is there a festival for someone who you know only lived at 35 which is a you know, but that's 11 years old. Right. And so long ago, and I said, well, that's a good question, babe. I said, he just had a lasting impact. So 71 now years ago, what mm -hmm. was sort of the idea behind even starting a festival in yeah. his name? So when it started, uh, country music legends... Ernest Tubb and Hank Snow, they started it in 1953 as a memorial tribute to Jimmy Rogers. And, you know, these those two men were the hottest things going on in mm -hmm. country music then. So they invited all of their friends. And if you can imagine, downtown Meridian had over 50,000 people. Wow. Um, and again, it lasted for an entire week. People camped out all over. Elvis was in the talent competition. He came in third. He did not win, but we don't know who the winner is, but we know Elvis came in third. So that's a good sort of a reminder for young folks, that's you know, right. you don't necessarily have to come in first all the time that's for it to right. turn out okay for you. Well, we say Elvis kind of set the bar there, so nobody wants to come in first anymore. <laughs> so, um, but we've had a lot of great um, country music artists come out of that, ta you know, talent show um, that have gone on to do really big things. Faith Hill, Randy Hauser, so many have come from that. Um, but so, yeah, it just it keeps going every day and, uh, I mean, every year, so 71 years. Here we and are. And the crescendo is this weekend, That's right? right. Like leading up to you've got tonight, there's going to be live music here at the Temple. It was going to be at the Max, but you know what? you got to pivot whenever right. Mother Nature says not exactly. today. <laughs> exactly. And so it had to shift uh, venues, which I know behind the scenes you guys have been working super hard uh, for that. But what's, I mean, but it's still going to be phenomenal. The mm -hmm. show's still going on, as oh, they yeah, say. Oh, yeah, definitely. So what is coming up for the next uh, couple of days here? So tonight we are sold out, um, 1,600 seats in, you know, gym, uh, the Temple Theater, which is a historic theater um, itself as part of the festival. So it's neat to have it back mm -hmm. here. Um, so we have that tonight. Tomorrow is more of our country night. We kind of do something different every day. So we have something for everyone. And, you know, if you look at Jimmy Rogers' music, most people don't realize over a third of it was blues. He had gospel. He had country. He had rock, what we call rock now, Americana. So we we try to do tribute to all of this. So tomorrow is going to be our country night. Um, we've got some great artists, local, regional, and the national artists that are going to be on the stage. Trey Lewis is going to headline that. He's promoting his new album that he just had come out. We've got Maurice. He was on American Idol. If you go to New Orleans, you see him there. He plays all over. Uh, he just got off the stage of Mor with Morgan Wallen. So we have some great talent that will be here. Pa Paxton Pay. He's originally from Starkville, but now making his way in Nashville, doing great things. 
and so he'll be here. And then um, the Jacks Moore Band, which is right here from Meridian. So we're excited to kind of spotlight that local regional talent. So that's tomorrow. And then we're going to end the festival on Sunday. Uh, it's the best ending we could possibly have. It's our New Orleans Gospel Brunch. Absolutely. So we have about a 20-piece Grammy award-winning um, choir from New Orleans. And then we have excellent food from New Orleans. <laughs> well, where, where, and where will that take place? It's all going to take place at the Max. Okay, so that will be like an outside brunch sort of in, Exactly, in and you're going to get up. You're going to be doing the second line. Um, Cathead is one of our sponsors, so there are some refreshing beverages that will be served, the mimosas, the Bloody Marys. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Is that what keeps you coming back year after year, Leslie? You know what? Um, I think what does it for me, and I'm going to say this for everyone that's a part of this festival, it's the passion that people have for this. It's bigger than you know one person our board of directors all of our volunteers it's it's just we're so proud to be a part of it and what it means to people you know i didn't really get the impact of that first starting out until i started working in the museum the jimmy rogers museum we have people come over from all over the world come to visit they tell us their stories how jimmy rogers either impacted their life their parents, their grandparents, and those memories. And, you know, music holds memories so much to people. And so it's great for us just to be a part of that, continue keeping that legacy going. It also feels like a, a festival that you can share with different generations within the family because it's it's got its kid-friendly sort of mm -hmm. vibes to it, right? And mm -hmm. then obviously if you've got teenagers or young adults with the older generation, it feels like it's something that you could grow up coming to and That's then right. sort of continue and introduce to your children when the time is right. That's right. We try to have something for everyone. Um, for instance, last night we went out of Meridian. We went over to Philadelphia. And when Marty Stewart says, here, take my theater, you say, thank you, Mr. Stewart. And you take <laughs> yes, you do. And so uh, last night we had, it was kind of a nod to the past. We had Merle Haggard's son, uh, Ben Haggard and Noel Haggard, and they played. And it was just great because their father, Merle Haggard, came here so many years in a row um, because of his love for Jimmy Rogers and for the music and for the culture. So it was fantastic to have and to be able to offer that last night. And we had a lot of people from the past that grew up, you know, that now are in their 70s and 80s, but got to see that Merle vibe again. Do y'all have anyone coming that's come to all 71? Hmm, I don't know. We but that would be a good, that would be great, like a little right? bit of homework. <laughs> Maybe if you're listening to good things and you're like, yes, I'm on my way to Meridian or I'm That's in Meridian right. and I've, this will be my 71st. It's like, stop by the Temple Theater. <laughs> come on, Rebecca come wants to talk to you on good things. But, you know, there's a chance that there is, right? Yeah, there's a definitely. chance that someone started out as a young uh, a youngster and it's just mm -hmm. sort of because it's such a good draw for the local um, community that has just sort of made it part. I know you mentioned it's the third year for you to be the executive director for the uh, Jimmy Roberts Festival even though this is the 71st. When did you first get introduced to the festival with, with being um, there? It the was probably about, well, gosh, you know, I've lived in Meridian for about 15 years now, so as soon as I heard there was a festival, I started going to it. I mean, they always have great talent. Yeah. So just being a part of that and then having friends. And then I got onto the board of directors um, for just a short bit because I just – Again, I, I fell in love with it and what people are doing and what they're doing. So I wanted to be a part of it. So I, that's how I got sucked in, and I decided to stay and help. Tonight's um, probably not the right night to ask if you're coming back for the 72nd because you're so tired, <laughs> Leslie. But, you know, you it's like a wedding or having a child. You wake up the next morning right. or a couple of days after you get well rested. You're like, let's do this. Let's do it. Again, but you still got a few more days to go, and people have a few more days to have an opportunity to hear good music. So is going to JimmyRogers.com the best place to still it get is. tickets? Yes. Get your tickets there, and you can find out about our foundation, what all we do. Um, you know, we have a great education department. We work with the community. So it's not just festival or museum. We do a lot. And if folks are not necessarily buying tickets beforehand, can they show up? I know tonight's sold out. Right. So tonight, don't you can come to Meridian. Mm -hmm. Come have some good food and right. walk around and do all the things, but you're not going to make it to the Temple Theater. Tomorrow, though, I hear it's supposed to move back to the Max. Yes, we are moving back to the Max. Uh, it's just a beautiful location and a backdrop to, you know, to use the Max. And so we're so excited that they partnered with us this year. So, yes, tickets will be available at the door if they don't want to go online, and they can get them at the door and... At the door and the brunch, but we only have about 300 tickets for that brunch, and that's all we're selling now. I don't know how many we have left, so I would get those online. Go ahead and get those online because it seems like the weather's going to let up after tonight, yes. and it's going to break to have a perfect weekend for the 71st annual uh, Jimmy Rogers Festival. Leslie, I appreciate your time, but you guys stick with us. we got so many more good things for you coming up next.